What's up everyone, it's Brandon. Dividend growth investing is a powerful way to make money in the stock market. However, most people don't know which metrics to look at before choosing dividend stocks to add to their portfolios. In this video, I'll explain five metrics you need to understand if you want to improve your success as a dividend investor. If analyzed correctly, these indicators can help minimize your risk in the stock market and maximize your passive income from dividends over time. Additionally, I'll analyze an actual dividend stock to determine if it's worth investing in so you can understand what this looks like in the real world. If you find this information helpful, please subscribe to this channel and ring the notification bell to be notified of future uploads. It helps my channel more than you know and I genuinely appreciate the support. Now let's get started. Alright, so the first dividend metric that we want to look at is the dividend payout. The dividend payout, sometimes called the annual payout, is the amount of a company's profits per share that the company pays to its shareholders annually. For instance, if you were to buy a share of XYZ company for $100 and the company paid out a dividend of $1, in other words, a dividend payout, every single year the company would pay you $1 simply for holding the stock. And usually what the company does is it splits the payments across four um, equal unit so every three months it will pay you 25 cents to hold one share of their stock. So here I'll provide a few real-world examples so that you can get an idea what this looks like. So for example JP Morgan Chase ticker symbol JPM pays their shareholders four dollars annually for each share that they own and what this means is that every quarter uh, shareholders will receive one dollar quarterly four times a year which equates to four dollars and then you can see the same uh, metrics for Microsoft Target and 3M Company. Now let's talk about why the dividend payout is important. Number one, you want to know that the company actually provides dividend income to shareholders. If you are a dividend investor, you don't want to invest in a stock that actually doesn't pay a dividend and the dividend payout metric is what is going to tell us whether or not they actually pay a dividend to shareholders. Number two, the dividend payout tells us how much we're going to receive annually in cash. So just like your 9 to 5 job, you want to know exactly what you're going to make and you want to know what you're going to take home uh, on each and every paycheck. Also, the dividend payout tells us how much of our income is actually going to be taxable because we want to know exactly how much of our money is going to be given to Uncle Sam each year. Um, and then fourthly, the dividend in you is used to calculate the dividend yield, which we'll actually talk about later in the video, and also the payout ratio. And then last but not least, it tells us if the current dividend is different than the previous because we're going to want to know if the dividend uh, payout is increasing from year to year and we want to know that the dividend is not decreasing from year to year or actually staying the same. So if the dividend is cut, we want to know that it's cut and we can use the dividend payout to determine that. The next metric you're going to want to know if you're a dividend investor is the dividend yield. The dividend yield is the percentage of a company's share price paid to shareholders annually. So for instance, if you uh, are investing again in XYZ company and you buy a share for $100 and their dividend payout is $1, then their dividend yield is going to be 1%. So an easy way to think about this, for every $100 dollars that you invest in a company, their dividend yield is going to tell you how many dollars you're actually going to receive. Again, here are dividend yield examples of actual dividend stocks. If we look at JP Morgan Chase, you can see that the dividend yield is 3.51% annually. What this means is that for every $100 that you invest in JP Morgan, they are going to pay you $3.51. If you go down to the 3M company, for every $100 that you invest in 3M, they're going to pay you $4.64 annually because their dividend yield is $4.64. Alright, let's talk about why the dividend yield is so important. First of all, the dividend yield can be a high level measure of our annual income as a percentage. It's nice to know what you're making based on a percentage. So for example, if we were to create a portfolio of dividend stocks and combined or average our return is about 5%, we know that we're going to be making about $50 a year. And you can increase that to whatever number you want, 10,000, we're going to make $500 a year, etc. It also allows us to gauge and practice risk management evaluations. So later in the video, we'll actually Actually talk about this more but basically what I'm saying here is that if the dividend yield is too high it may not be a safe uh, investment and if it's too low it may not be worth the investment but we'll talk about that later in the video as well. Uh, thirdly uh, as a general rule the higher the yield the more dividend investors get paid while holding their investments and 
Lastly is that the yield allows us to compare returns with other dividend paying stocks. So when you are shopping around for which dividend stock you want to add to your portfolio and you are looking at a stock that pays 3% but there's another stock that might be in the same sector and let's say it pays 3.5%, well you can use that difference and say is it worth it to invest in the 3.5% stock versus the 3% stock and there are other metrics you can look at but we can use the dividend yield as one thing that we can use for comparison. The third metric that you need to understand as a dividend investor is the payout ratio. The payout ratio is a financial indicator that represents the percentage of profits a company pays shareholders as a dividend compared to total earnings. So in short, what this means is that if a company has a payout ratio of 50% and they, the company earns $1 per share, well, 50 cents, or in other words, 50% of the earnings will go to the shareholders and the other 50% or the other 50 cents will be reinvested back into the company to fuel future growth. And here are some payout ratio examples of actual dividend stocks. If we look at Microsoft, you can see that they're paying a little over a quarter of its profits back to shareholders, which means they're investing or reinvesting the other three quarters of its profits back into the company. All right, so why is the payout ratio so important? The payout ratio indicates the long-term sustainability of a company's dividend program. This tells us whether or not a company is paying too much of its profits back to shareholders. Now later in the video we'll talk about why this is important with more examples, but as a general rule you want, you want the payout ratio to be lower than 30% and no more than 70%. If the payout ratio is too high, then the company might not be investing enough money back into the company to encourage growth and future profitability. The fourth metric that we want to be aware of is the compound annual growth rate. The compound annual growth rate, or the CAGR, measures an investment's annual growth rate over a specified time with the compounding taken into effect. So what this means is that uh, you have a percentage that is calculated based on a, a simple formula. You take the current dividend amount minus the dividend amount from a specified time period, so let's say five years ago, and then you factor in uh, the compounding effect and this is what gives us the compound annual growth rate percentage. For example, over the last five years annually, JP Morgan has increased their dividend by about 14.99%. Microsoft has increased their uh, dividend over the last five years by about 9.6%, Target at 8.45%, and the 3M company at 5.38% over the last five years each year. So one thing to keep in mind with these numbers is that these are indicators of past performance and it doesn't mean that the companies are actually going to increase their dividend at the same rate. So please keep that in mind if you're gonna use this indicator to purchase your next dividend stock. So here are the reasons why the five-year compound annual growth rate is important. The five-year compound annual growth rate tells us the historical average of the annual dividend increase. Now what we can do with this is we can look at this as a prediction model to loosely help us decide whether or not it's worth investing in based on what we think the stock could do in the future. And as I said before, this, there's no guarantee that the company will follow the same pattern, um, but it can be used as a indicator as long as you understand there is no guarantee. So we can use this prediction model also to compare with other stocks that we might be interested in purchasing, but again, this is just a loose prediction, and if you're going to use this indicator, please understand that there is no future guarantee of past performance. Last but not least, as dividend growth investors, we want to understand the dividend history. The dividend history is the total number of years a company has consecutively paid and increased the amount of its dividend to shareholders. And here are a few examples. JP Morgan Chase has been paying its dividend and increasing it for 9 years, Microsoft for 18 years, Target for 50 years, I'm sorry, 54 years, and the 3M company incredibly has been paying its dividend and increasing for 63 years of dividend growth. And here are a few reasons why the dividend history is important. A company's dividend history tells us how consistently it pays its shareholders. The history can help us to loosely predict future dividend payouts, and of course this is just a loose prediction model, so again, you can't rely on future performance to match past performance. And uh, lastly, a solid history gives us long-term confidence in our investment 
and peace of mind. So in my opinion, I would put more faith that a company will continue to pay its dividends if it's been paying for, let's say, 50 years, like a stock such as Johnson & Johnson, as opposed to a stock who's only been paying a dividend for one year. Next, I want to talk about a few warning signs that you should be aware of if you're going to use these metrics to invest in dividend stocks. First, the dividend yield is generally considered risky when it's over 7-10%. to It's always better to buy stocks with a yield between 2 and 4% and instead focus on long-term returns instead of trying to capture that high yield right up front. There are exceptions such as when the market corrects and dividend yields are artificially or I should say temporarily inflated and certain dividend kings are going to be safer to invest in if they have higher dividend yields. Also, it's best to invest in companies that pay dividends using the free cash flow instead of debt. When a company pays its dividends using debt, chances are they're not investing back into their company and the company isn't going to grow in the future. Next is the payout ratio, uh, which is generally going to be considered unsafe when it's over 75 to 95 percent. Similar to the dividend yield, if the payout ratio is too high, the company is not investing enough cash back into the company to fuel growth and profitability. So what you want to do is choose stocks with payout ratios that are less than 30 percent whenever possible. Also there are exceptions such as real estate investment trusts which actually have tax advantages to paying more dividends out to shareholders. So it's not uncommon to see uh, uh, payout ratios in the upwards of 80, 90, or 100 percent when you're looking at real estate investment trusts. In a future video, we'll look at other indicators such as market cap, the price to earnings ratio, earnings per share, and free cash flow. But for now, I'd like to examine a real world stock using the five metrics discussed in this video. So I'm going to be looking at the Procter & Gamble company, ticker symbol PG. If we scroll down here on Seeking Alpha, we can see that the dividend yield is at 2.5%. And if you remember from the earlier part of the video, for every $100 that you invest in this company, they're going to be paying you about $2.50. And we also talked about how a safe dividend yield is usually in between the 2 and 4% mark, and that can be stretched a little bit, but generally that's kind of the range I like to stay within. So this is great. If we look at the annual payout, uh, this is the amount that the company is going to pay its shareholders per share every single year. So if we were to buy one share of Procter & Gamble Company, uh, the company would pay us about $3.65 annually. Not bad. Uh, next, let's go over to the payout ratio. And you can see right here, the payout ratio is just above 60%. And generally, we want to stay below 30%. However, uh, 60 isn't quite in the danger zone yet. Um, so when we get above 70, 75% and upwards, uh, we're going to start to be really concerned that the company is possibly paying out too much money to its shareholders. So 60 is okay, but again, we want to stay below 30. Uh, next, we're going to look at the five-year growth rate. This is the compound annual growth rate from the earlier part of the video, and this is at 5.48%. So on average, the company, um, if you factor in uh, the compounding effect, they're paying its shareholders, or I should say they're increasing their dividend by about 5.48% annually. That's not bad. So I think this is a good uh, growth rate. And uh, lastly, if we look at the dividend growth, uh, the Procter & Gamble Procter & Gamble company has been increasing their dividend for 65 years. Now this is just absolutely incredible. There are a lot of companies out there who've been increasing their dividend for 10 years or maybe just paying it for 10 years, but Procter & Gamble has been paying their dividend for 65 years and increasing it for 65 years, which is absolutely insane. Let's go up to the dividend history and we can get a better visualization of this. So for the last five years, you can see right around here, they're paying 69 cents quarterly. And every year, you could say they did that four times a year, and then they increased right here to 72 cents. They increased to 75 cents, and they increased, and they increased, and then recently they just increased their dividend once again in April. And if we zoom out to the max chart, look how beautiful this chart is. It's just smooth as can be. Right back from, let's see, this is 1989. They've been paying a dividend. They've been increasing their dividend. And this is a company I trust and I recommend, and I do believe that the Procter & Gamble Company is a company that is worth investing in.
Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more dividend growth investing and personal finance videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.